Hey guys, what's up and welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be taking a look at what it's like to fly on Virgin Atlantic's new upper class. This is their business class product on the A350 and today we're going to be trying it flying from New York right over to London. And just in case you haven't already, do make sure you smash that subscribe button for plenty more content like this on the channel. And if you enjoy the video, do make sure you give it a good thumbs up. Let's head straight over to the plane and go over to London. Upon boarding, I was greeted and directed to my seat. I love how roomy the A350 feels. The white, red and gold colour scheme is beautiful and the whole plane feels quite futuristic. I have a window seat today, but let's take a quick look at the middle seats. Ideal for those travelling as a couple, but equally does seem to offer solid privacy should you find yourself here solo. There's a divider between the seats and they face away from each other. Now for my window seat, 3K. My word, these are miles ahead of Virgin's existing upper class. One of my issues with the banana seats was not being able to look out the window. You can see already that this has changed. Let's step inside the upper class suite and see what you get. Immediately noticeable is the ample room to spread out. I like how your feet are not in a cubby, which has become the norm in many business class seats. That screen though, fully touch sensitive, though a little far back if I'm honest. There is no controller, but you can connect your phone to do so via Wi-Fi. Love this. To the right of my seat, I had my amenity kit. Interestingly, this was biodegradable and made out of recycled cardboard. More on this in a minute. I was also provided with a pretty substantial fluffy white pillow, which I have to say was very comfortable. Stowed down by my feet were some headphones. I don't tend to use airline provided ones as they're of poor quality and lack good noise cancellation. I would wholeheartedly recommend Bose Sound Comforts. I've got a link in the description. Something I find really important on a plane is individual air vents. It can make sleep difficult if the cabin is too hot, therefore these two individual nozzles are most appreciated. Interestingly, Virgin seem to have not spec the cool shutter windows which Qatar have on most of their A350s. I've dropped this in here so you can see what they should have gone for. Yes, it is a bit unnecessary, but I think it's pretty cool. Now, before you ask, don't worry, Virgin do serve pre-departure champagne. They offer Lance and Black Label in both their lounges and in flight, and I of course had to try several glasses. It was now time for takeoff. The mood lighting was switched on, and after a short taxi, we were airborne. The A350 has a tail camera, and whilst the Middle Eastern Airlines have been offering this for years, I still find it such a cool feature. I love a night takeoff from JFK. The views over the city are sublime. Now we're airborne, let's take a look around. In order to call this a suite, it had to have some kind of closing privacy door. Now, don't laugh, but this is the extent to which this closes. It does create a little more privacy, but I don't really know why they didn't have fully closing doors like on the new BA A350. Your armrest is to your left or indeed your right if you're the other side of the cabin. This I found a little bit odd to use. You really have to jam the button in to raise it, but this might be just because it's new. Your tray table. This folds out at the touch of a button and kind of swivels over in front of you. It doesn't give you a huge amount of breathing space, so if you're on the larger side, I imagine this being quite tight. Hidden behind your tray table is a small storage space. Virgin also place a bottle of water here for you, which I think is a nice touch. By your headrest, there's a thoughtfully placed light next to you, which is ideal for a spot of bedtime reading. Lastly, I should mention the seat controls. We'll talk more about this in a minute when we set up the suite for bed. The unique feature about this A350 is Virgin's use of the galley space. To the rear of the upper class section is the loft. Virgin became famous for its in-flight bar, but this is to replace this. And whilst it's not permanently manned, you can order as you please from air staff throughout the flight. I found the seats comfortable enough and it did feature seat belts so you didn't need to go back to your seat during turbulence. There's also a TV which you can connect your Bluetooth headphones to, though I can't see the ease of agreeing with your fellow passengers about which movie or series to watch. It is a nice idea though. On the counter in the loft there is a small snack basket provided, but it's worth noting if you want anything more substantial, or indeed a drink, you can order this off the main menu. Food on today's flight looked really good, the highlights being fillet steak 
and of course the chocolate cake. But I took advantage of the pre-flight meal in the lounge, which I'd suggest for a red eye flight like this one. So what did I get in the lounge? I was provided with some warm honey roasted peanuts to begin with. And then my starter arrived, which was chili salted adami beans, complemented with buffalo chicken wings and a blue cheese sauce. For main, I had pesto and ricotta gnocchi, and then finished with a dessert of chocolate fondant with ice cream. Needless to say, I was pretty full after. After my time in the loft, I headed back to my suite to prepare for bed. Virgin provide pyjamas which have definitely improved since I last tried them. They're made of high quality cotton and I can confirm I've held on to them for home. I've included shots of the bed in daylight so you can see it better. There's a mattress topper, light duvet and fluffy pillow set out for you by the air staff. I can confirm these work together for a solid night's sleep though the 6 hour flight from JFK to Heathrow is not nearly enough. So let's take a look inside the amenity kit which you get on board. Virgin seems to be pushing sustainability big on this one, which is good to see. You get Ren lip balm, moisturizer, hand cream, some earplugs, a bamboo toothbrush, pen, eye mask, and some socks which were among the highest quality I've actually had on a plane. Yep, they're now in the sock drawer. So after a pretty good but short sleep, the cabin staff began preparing the cabin for landing. I opted for an espresso and then was provided with some love hearts which I thought was pretty random. Lastly, they provided a fast track pass for customs on arrival which at peak times at Heathrow is invaluable. So I hope you enjoyed that walkthrough of the A350 on Virgin Atlantic. It was pretty cool and exciting to film and experience. I have to say there were a few points that I wasn't totally convinced about. So the loft, uh, which probably doesn't actually give it the most justice on video, but I can't say that it was the most exciting area in a plane. I'm not sure if I actually preferred the bar that they had on the Dreamliner or indeed on the A330 and 40. So maybe they would have been better off having that rather than the loft. In terms of a seat, it's a massive improvement over what we currently get on the existing business class or upper class for Virgin. So my final thoughts are it is definitely worth if you can getting on the A350 on their New York route. They're also flying it on their Tel Aviv route. I'm not sure which other ones they have announced yet. I think it might be India. I'm not 100% sure, but we're sure to have an update very soon. And it's gonna be quite cool to see what other people think of this as well. So guys, if you haven't already, do make sure you smash that subscribe button so that you don't miss out on any future videos on the channel. And do let me know what you thought in the comments below.